All right, guys. Uh, just want to show you a little demonstration today of uh, trying to get a basic uh, fuel trim done in a car. This is a, uh, a 2002 WRX. However, it has a uh, later model STI block in it. So it's 2.5 block, uh, 20G turbo, front mount intercooler, and 1,000 cc injectors. Now we had sent this customer a base map to get them up and running. Uh, the injectors were unknown at the time, so we just had to take, kind of take a guess and. Right now, we can see that, uh, if you look at the screen here, you can see that it's very, very lean at idle, not nearly enough fuel. And uh, if we look at our air fuel learning, you can see that it's actually been adding a ton of fuel uh, across the board. Looks like they couldn't even keep it idling, so they were actually out of the idle range here, above 5 grams uh, per second of airflow, because they probably had to give it throttle to keep it idling when it was this lean. And we're adding 25% right now, we're still 17 to 1. So that tells us that we're probably way, way off. Now, initially the thought would be we'd be just way off on our injector uh, latency but in fact because we're off across the board it's probably not just the latency it's probably our, our fuel scale now unfortunately because this is an early model car our latency is not a real-time alterable uh, number here so you have to do that uh, uh, on up on a, a flash but realistically that's not a bad latency for a modern thousand cc injector so I'm gonna guess that for some reason either our mass airflow calibration is off but unfortunately, because this is a 2002, we really can't do much because we can't go above 300 grams per second of airflow. So the step's going to be then to go ahead and uh, add some fuel by changing our injector scale here. So uh, we know we're off by at least 15% across the board and actually more than that at, at, at very light loads. So what we're going to need to do is increase this number here by 15% or more. We'll go ahead and increase it by 20%. We're going to do that by hitting the M key for multiply and multiply by 1.2. Okay, now, I don't know if you can hear that uh, over my microphone, but the idle immediately got a lot smoother. However, we're still kind of lean, which is unusual. So the next step is going to be to go ahead and uh, put it up under some load and see if we're as lean uh, at part throttle as we are as idle. That'll tell us if we need to adjust our injectors more or if we need to worry more about the latency. So we're going to go ahead and load the car up here. Setting up my dyno right now. Okay, we'll try just 3,000 RPM for right now. Okay, so we can see now that at 3,000 RPM, we actually have a total correction, or we're talking about some corrections of about minus 10%, and that's uh, at a uh, a mass airflow value of about 47 grams per second. So that's in the higher end of where we'd see our air fuel learning uh, right up there. So let's go ahead and back it off a little bit. We'll go down to about 2,500 RPM and the 33 grams. You can still see we're actually, we have a sum still about minus 6 to 10 percent. So what that tells me is that 20 percent we added is probably a little bit too much uh, for the fuel injector scale. So we're going to go ahead and reduce this a little bit. Let's take this down to uh, 970, so about 10% out. Well, now hold on there. So we actually got another change here, which is interesting. Now it's telling us that we're we're rich again, or that we're lean. Ah, okay. So see the difference there is that once we get above 40 grams per second. Uh, of airflow, we're pretty close now. We're just a little bit on the lean side. But when we get below 40 grams per second, you see we go very, very, very lean, uh, which is kind of unusual. It should not be that big of a difference. Let's take it down more, get down to about 2,000 RPM. You know, we're still at 15, 16% lean down there. Down to 20 grams per second of airflow, or 20% lean. So, what we're seeing there is that uh, we definitely need to have some latency tweaks going on here. So, what we're going to do is we're going to our latency. We're going to have to flash the uh, the ECU, unfortunately, for this one. So, it's going to take a little bit. We're going to go ahead and bump the latency up by about 15% for right now. So, that's a little bit higher than I'd like to see, but it could be these injectors need it. It's probably still not going to be enough to get us through that point right there. I mean, we're at 25% enrichment and still not down to a proper 14.7 ratio at idle. Uh, but that should get us a little bit closer. The other thing we're going to want to do is probably go ahead and, and bring the mass airflow up uh, down here. You know, try and flatten things out a little bit.
trying to do here is get a nice smooth idle with a nice stable air fuel mixture. Now, when we go back and do our latency correction, we should be able to bring this correction down quite a bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to save this file. Uh, get out of our dashboard, disconnect from the ECU, and turn it off. We've got our handy dandy connectors. We'll go ahead and connect our uh, both our test connectors and our flash connectors. And we're going to go ahead and flash this here. these early cars don't take very long to flash. Okay, we'll go ahead and start the car back up. We wait about 5-10 seconds after we do our reflash. Connect to the ECU. And remember, whenever you connect to an ECU again for the first time after you've disconnected, the access support software is going to reset you to basic stock mapping, so you can re-upload the map that you want to see. It'll actually give you the real-time tables from the ECU you've connected to, but you want to have the entire map there. Uh, so I always like to reload the last map that I did. Let's go ahead and view our dashboard. Excellent. Now you can see we're actually a little bit rich down there, which is terrific. So I actually had a little bit too much latency, but don't forget I also bumped up our mass airflow values as well. So we can go ahead and do our mass airflow values and bring those back down. with that now. We're very, very close. We're getting some fluctuations here. Uh, could be, this has got a cold air intake, so we could be getting some airflow from the fans as well. It's causing some disturbance at very low airflow levels. Let's go ahead and bring it back up to 2,000 RPM, see what happens. We're seeing a pretty good trim. I'm pretty happy with that now. So we'll go ahead and leave that there. And that's just a basic example of how to, of how to get a basic fuel trim level up and running uh, using your injector size, your injector latency, and small tweaks to the mass airflow sensor value.